If you've ever struggled creating evenly spaced mat, you are going to love this product. We have 12 different designs and let me show you exactly how it works. Right here, I have one of these templates and it looks very simple, but that's the point. It is simple and easy to use. What you would do is you're going to place this on your cardstock and then we're going to place the photos in each of these holes. This particular template is sized for both four by six and three by four photos. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually utilize two sides of this pad, this cardstock and I'm going to bump the template up next to those sides. While I have the template here, I'm going to add adhesive to the back of my photos and then I'm going to just simply place them into each of the different sections. So here we have a four by six photo on the top. I will also place one on the bottom. I've already added adhesive to these ones so I'll just quickly place them inside. So my two th four by sixes, and now I'm going to add these two three by fours. You could also add cut apart cards if you want a space for journaling, or even one of the cut apart cards that has a title. You can use one of those spots for a title. So now that I have those items inside each of the sections, I'm not going to move the template, but I'm going to use a pencil. In this case, I'm going to use a pen so that you can see where I'm marking. So I'm gonna mark on this side of the template, and then I'm going to come over here and mark on the other side. Really an essence I'm just marking where I'm going to cut this paper. So then I lift my template. I can reuse this over and over again, but you can see that my photos are quickly and easily spaced evenly. I've got these nice even borders in between each one. So now all I do is I take my trimmer and I'm going to cut along where I've made those marks. So just two quick cuts, one, two, and now I can add this to a background page, whether it's pattern paper or another sheet of cardstock, and I've got my layout ready to go. These templates pair perfectly with our page pieces. These are the larger pack of pay, uh, die cuts that include a title, a journal spot, and all these fun elements to make your projects come together quickly and easy. So here we have this page template. This is just one of 12 different designs. Now remember that you can use it as is, but you can also mirror image it. You can turn it vertical or horizontal, or you can just use sections of it. You're gonna need all 12 different designs to get a variety of looks on your scrapbook pages and for quick and easy scrapbooking. Hi, this is Michelle, owner of Pink and Main. We're here at Creativation 2022. I've got Taylor here with me and we're ready to show you some exciting products that we have to offer. We're going to demonstrate our flocks and our glitters. We have flock with and without glitter. And we also have super fine glitter mixes that are exclusive to us. Here's a sample of all of our super fine glitters. We've done it on a small strip of white cardstock on the right and black cardstock on the left. So you see a little bit of the color change with light and dark cardstock. Most of them are pretty opaque, so they just look super sparkly on anything you add them to. This sample of, we have 15 colors of our flocking fibers. And again, we've shown them on light and dark cardstock. You do get a little color variance when whatever color you put them onto. The flock is fun, it's super fuzzy, it feels like velvet when you add it to your projects. It just needs something sticky, there's no heat needed. But before you do your embossed stamping, we have an anti-static powder tool. So our anti-static powder tool, it comes with a refill of the powder, which will allow you to fill the tool three to four times. So that's gonna last you a good long time. And then when you're ready to use it, you just pull the cap off the top. It has a brush protector that you slide down. That enables you to put the cap back on easily without messing up your brush. And you just lightly dust it over your surface before you do your stamping and embossing. What's also nice about it, and we're gonna show you here, is if you brush it over your surface when you're gonna use flocking or glitter, it also helps to to lessen the static cling that you'll have with any of your small fibers and particles. So we've got a tag and we've added our easy tear double-sided tape in three sections. And we're gonna play around with some of our super fine glitter and some of our flocks and show how easy they are to use. And this one has glitter in it, so you're gonna get that fuzzy feel again with a super sparkly finish. You wanna burnish or press the powder into the tape so you get a good coverage. 
and then it's as simple as just tapping off the excess. We've got a coffee filter underneath us. You can also use a scrap piece of paper to collect the excess because you always want to put that back in your jar and save it because it'll last you a good long time. And then look at that sparkly finish and I wish you could touch it through the screen because it's got that nice soft velvety feel. And that really gives a fun textured feel and look to your projects, your scrapbook pages, your cards, your journals. It's really that fun finished look that the flock gives. All right, and now we're gonna show you our ergonomic blender brushes. I came out with these brushes because the handle is on the top of the brush, which gives you great control when you're blending ink and where you wanna put it, and it's easy on your hands to use. They come in cases so that they keep the inky brush surface off the surface of your table so you can snap it back into the case whenever you're done with it. Our large ergonomic blender brush works great for larger surfaces and creating backgrounds with a beautiful smooth finish that you can blend over the paper. Our mini ergonomic blender brush is really great for using with stencils or those smaller areas that you want to get into and get a nice blend. The brush is nice and flat on the bottom, so it just glides over the paper effortlessly. When you're ready and you're done with one color, if you want to add a second color, it's very easy with our brushes to brush it off on our microfiber scrub it clean cloth. You just wipe off that color until you don't have any color showing up on the brush and you can go right into your next color and blend them together. We also have a brush cleaner that you can spray either onto the brush or onto our brush scrubber. And then you rub the brush across the, the brush scrubber to get all that excess ink off of the brush. And that's good for when you're finished with a project, you wanna get it nice and clean and ready for the next project later on. Kimberly Dean from Kimberly Dean Designs and I'm gonna show you how to create a beautiful flower out of alcohol ink with these Ranger inks today. I'm going to start with amethyst. This is a really pretty purple color. I'm going to put that down for my center of my flower. And I like to use these little micro tools. And if it doesn't come out into a complete circle, I usually just go in there and just, you know, shape it up a little bit like this. So I picked a couple of colors. I picked this purple along with this really pretty honeycomb yellow and these are complementary colors that sometimes people worry about them getting a little bit muddy when you're painting but with alcohol ink if you keep them a little bit separate you get this really pretty kind of contrasting look that doesn't get muddy so that's what we're hoping for today so I'm going to use my little ranger blower give it a little bit of air to get this ink dry at least mostly dry and it has a, a, it's really shiny when you first put it down, but as it dries, it starts to become a little bit, um, you know, the kind of dulls out a little bit, so you can tell that it's dry. I'm going to be using blending solution to move the ink to help it flow. So I'm going to use my honeycomb. I'm going to put it down along the outer edge of this purple center. Then I'm going to drop my blending solution along that purple and then just give it some air and just blow out a little petal. So I'm just giving it a little, some little puffs of air with this tool, just squeezing it a little bit. And these little lines that are forming here, I didn't do any of that. These are all being done by the alcohol ink, just kind of its nature has this really pretty organic nature that creates these beautiful shapes. So I'm gonna rotate my paper around. It makes it easier for me if I find a good comfortable place to hold this tool and then I rotate my paper so I can kind of keep my tool in the same position each time. Just makes it, um, I can be a little bit more consistent with how it looks that way. Oops. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my yellow honeycomb. And notice I'm not touching that purple color with the yellow, I'm keeping it a little bit separate. And I'm putting down some blending solution. And I'll go around the edges and shape that up a little bit back in the center to kind of keep my petal wide. 
and you see how those like pretty shapes are forming and that's just again that that's all being done just by the alcohol ink. that's not anything that I'm really doing here it's just the that kind of organic organic nature of the inks I'm going to do this all the way around put down some more yellow and to my blending solution I'm catching that purple with my blending solution now that time I got a little bit more purple and if this happens if it if you get a little bit more than you expect you can just go back with your blending solution again and move it out again so I always tell people when you're using these inks that you have to kind of expect the unexpected because they don't always turn out exactly like you plan but that's kind of the beauty of this medium is that everything's going to be different each time that you paint you're going to get a different result you can practice a whole lot and that helps you be a little bit more consistent but it's really cool I think that everything's going to look different you can't really recreate a painting with alcohol ink so I like to keep blowing the ink until it's completely dry if you if you stop blowing it while it's still wet, you might get some kind of odd shapes in there, so you want to keep the air on it until it's totally dry. And it only takes a few seconds for alcohol ink to dry. So we're just going all the way around. Isn't that pretty? So more yellow. Some more blending solution. How are you? So I just go around the edges, back in the center. Okay, I'm going to do that again over here. This one turned out a little more purple, but you know that's just how it turned out. So that's what we're going to go with. All right, so I'm just going to use this snowcap mixative. This is a white ink and it's it's more opaque than your regular inks so you have to shake it up really well it has some pigment in it so it's a lot, lot thicker than your regular alcohol inks so you give it a good shake and then I'm going to drop some of this into my palette and I'm just going to go into the snow cap this white ink I'm going to dot it off on my paper towel I like to rotate my painting around and see which way I like it best I'm going to just go with it this way I think and I'm going to start applying some of these little dots in here thinking about my light source thinking about my light coming from this direction so I'm going to have my brightest area here and then kind of bring these this white down into this center area And my goal is to have it brighter around here and a little darker as it comes down. And I like for that transition to be you know, pretty smooth. I don't want it to look super bright and super dark. I like for it to have a very gradual transition from light to dark. And that's what gives you really beautiful depth in the center. And sometimes you have to go over it a few times just to get it to show up really well always going back to my brightest area first and making that super bright and bringing it down to that lower area and hopefully you can start to see a little dimension happening there I'm Mindy Egan with Hero Arts and today we are doing a make and take using the Water Lilies Heroscape which is a layering stamp set and we'll go ahead and get started the first layer that we are going to stamp is going to be in Tide Pool ink. This will be the first layer of our layering stamp set. Then I will move on to our second layer. And the second layer, I will be stamping in Orchid ink. Okay, 
Our third layer is going to add the water lilies to those open areas. And this is stamped in a green apple. And our final layer, we are going to stamp in aquatic ink. And this is actually going to add color to the inside of the lilies and also to the pieces we already stamped on the water. So makes you look like you're using more colors than you really are. That's our final layering image to complete that HeroScape. Next, we're going to be stamping our sentiment, which we're heat embossing. So I'm just going to prep that area with an anti-static powder tool. Going to ink up my sentiment with the embossing and watermark ink. Stamp that down. And it's a clear sticky ink so that my embossing powder will stick to it. Sprinkle on the Hero Arts Gold Embossing Powder. Tap off my excess. And then I can heat set it with my heat tool. Our finishing touch is going to be adding this bridge that I heat embossed and die cut with the coordinating die. So I am going to just pop that up with some foam squares. And then add that right to the front of my card. Hi everyone, it's Kim Kesty here in the Spellbinders booth at Creativation 2022 and we're super excited to share this new accessory for your platinum die cutting machine. It is a universal plate system and we've really had a lot of requests for the, the possibility of running not only our new 3D folders, ooh that was a hint right there, but also other manufacturers folders. We have a lot of requests that through our customer service and through other channels for people that say, I need a great sandwich for these really great embossing folders. So we have done that. So this is our original platform. Of course, this is um, for our Platinum 6. And really what we've done is added some flexibility. We've taken that same thickness, if you can see that, and voila, we've broken in two. So now when you add your embossing folder, you're gonna wanna use just the platform that's a little bit thinner. So again, if we have them married together, they're exactly the same as our original platform, but we've just added a lot of flexibility by breaking it into two pieces. So to run a 3D folder now, all you're gonna need is the smaller platform or platform A, and then the adapter plate. So super simple, we tried to make it as uncomplicated as possible. So here's a sneak peek of one of our brand new embossing folders. Again, very 3D, very cool. Those of you who are fans of Spellbinders know a long time ago we did 3D folders. And then we kind of got out of it for a while and we haven't had a really great sandwich since then, but now we have figured it all out and we're so excited. So again, paper in your folder, platform A, and then your adapter plate, super simple. Now I'll run it through and you can see this gorgeous folder. And this is gonna work for all of your favorite manufacturer's folders. We're super excited about that. You'll also notice, I don't know if you saw that earlier, that it's a longer base. So this is gonna be great for those fans of slimline cards. You're gonna have a lot of room to die cut on this guy. We pull that out and look at that. So gorgeous, so 3D, so dimensional. We just love it. Here's a couple more folders. I'm gonna show you some samples in a minute. Um, but here's one of our beautiful florals. Hopefully the video, Donald's doing a great job catching all that dimension. And look at the dots, how fun is that? I feel like this is a really scrapbook.com folder right here. 
so happy with all the fun little party dots. So those are just three of our new folders. We'll take a look in just a second at a bunch of the other ones. But we do have a couple card projects here made with two of the other folders. So look at that gorgeous geometric dimension. Just love it. So here's one more project with that wood grain bot to life. Look at that sweet little bird on there. And then this one's really funny. People have been calling it our pillow uh, embossing folder. So it does kind of look like a little puffy little pillow. So here's a fun little peek of our brand new 3D embossing folders and some of the samples that we created for the booth. Oh, we just love them. I can't wait to see all the projects you create with our folders.